Hi everybody, my name is Felipe Wisi. I'm here to talk to you about Unicraft and how to make Unikernels mainstream. As you know, the public cloud is a great success. It has great scalability, it's really easy to use, and has a whole lot of services. But it also has downsides. It's bloated, it's expensive, and it's certainly not eco-friendly. And there's been lots of reports stating that the cost of the cloud has become one of the main priorities for many, many companies now. So obviously this situation is good for the main cloud providers and potentially also one could argue for the hardware manufacturers, but not so good for anybody else. So the problem with the bloat has two parts. The first one is when you look at your application and the virtual machine it runs in, there's your business logic, could be a database, could be a web server. Under that, there are system services, libraries, and of course, the operating system. And there's lots of parts within these that you don't need to run that application, but you still pay for. The second part of the problem has to do with time. When your service or virtual machine starts, it's at first idle until the first client request arrives. Then it does useful work, but then it goes idle again. And every time it's idle, you're still paying for services uh, that are not really doing any useful work. And that's costing money too. So basically what's going on is that you'd like to run, uh, you're running basically a full cafe when all you need to be doing is running an espresso. And basically what we would like to do is specialize for the needs of particular applications running on cloud services. So if we're talking specialization and virtual machines, uh, this points to unikernels, which are essentially specialized virtual machines. So in a nutshell, if imagine you want to run a web server such as Nginx, you're going to have a number of third party libraries in your virtual machine image. You're going to have uh, software services. You have a, you're going to have the OS kernel, perhaps from Linux and you have lots of little blocks that you don't really need. You only need the sort of colored ones that I'm showing here for the web server to run. And what a unikernel tries to do is grab just those and build it into a very specialized virtual machine that is purpose built to run just that web server. The problem is that turning the left hand side picture into the unikernel in the past has required lots of development time. So in Unicraft, we're trying to fix that. We have a core build system and a principled architecture where everything is modular. Everything is a library so that we can easily plug and play and specialize for particular applications. And then we have a set of well-defined APIs so that we can actually plug and play things. So if we tar start at the top and we have the application, we have a libc uh, layer with uh, a libc called new lib. And we've also recently started adding uh, muscle support. It should be ready soon. Under that, we have a POSIX compatibility layer. I'll talk more about this later, but this is so that applications can run unmodified on Unicraft. And below all of that are the different uh, subsystems with well-defined APIs shown as black boxes. And this is what lets us plug and play different memory allocators, file systems, network stacks, and so forth. Under that is the platform layer where we add support for different uh, hypervisors, KVMs, and, and so forth. And then of course, CPU architecture support. So just to show you a few numbers, this is a Unicraft a Unikernel running Nginx on an EC2 instance. And basically when we open the URL, the instance boots, it starts Nginx and it serves this web page that has some basic stats. And here in this example, you can see that uh, Unicraft uh, booted in eight milliseconds. It took one more millisecond for Nginx to start up. The whole image is consuming just over four megabytes and on disk, the image was under two megabytes. And this is also showing a comparison against uh, Nginx running on Linux. Uh, with uh, the green number showing how much uh, more efficient Unicraft is. So this just shows the potential. And then the question is, why aren't Unikernels more widely deployed then? So we think there's multiple barriers to deployment that have hindered Unikernels from being mainstream. The first one, uh, ironically, has to do with performance, because if you think Unikernels are specialized VMs, why wouldn't they just run fast? 
And it turns out that many projects have uh, small but still monolithic uh, OS primitives. So it wasn't always easy to specialize things. There was lots of underperforming code, unoptimized network stacks and so forth. And many of the projects didn't really target performance. They were using languages such as Airline or OrCaml, and the purpose of those projects was never to go fast. In contrast, Unicraft's perf uh, target is to have better perf good performance from the beginning. So this is a measurement of Nginx uh, running, uh, measuring requests per second on uh, KVM Unicraft, but also we compared against other Unicraft projects and Linux as well. And you can see uh, where we come up on top. Um, this is about 300,000 requests per second on a single CPU core. We also do measurements to do with memory consumption, once again, against other Unikernel projects and Linux. Uh, and you can see Unicraft on the left is able to run uh, databases and web servers in as little as a few megabytes. Because Unicraft doesn't have a user space, kernel space divide, uh, latency is uh, pretty good. Uh, and this is a comparison against Linux. And uh, finally, a graph about boot times. Uh, you saw in that uh, sort of demo slide that Unicraft was booting in eight, nine milliseconds. Uh, some of the time is consumed obviously by the VMM. So Unicraft supports different VMMs, uh, uh, Kimu, uh, Solo 5, and more recently, Amazon Firecracker. And for instance, if you use Firecracker, then you can boot a Hello World Unicraft image in as little as three milliseconds. So pretty quick. And then uh, finally, image sizes, uh, Unicraft image sizes are pretty small. Uh, for real world applications, you can expect uh, one to two megs. So the second barrier to deployment has to do with application and platform support. In the past, there's been a lot of Unikernel projects that were specific to a single application or a single language. So their applicability was limited. Uh, many of them require porting, so you have to actually take an application and modify it by hand so that it would run on the Unikernel OS, so that wasn't uh, really scalable. And for those that did support some level of POSIX, meaning uh, they tried to look or offer the Linux API, uh, there was insufficient syscall support, so it was only partly supported. Unicraft already supports a rich set of applications and programming languages. But we also support what's called binary compatibility mode in which we can take uh, an unmodified ELF uh, built, for instance, under in a Linux host. And we have a special Unicraft library called uh, ELF loader, which does what its name suggests. It just loads that ELF. And whenever we get a syscall, we trap that and we redirect it to another Unicraft library called the syscom shim layer. And this layer then takes care of redirecting that syscall call to the Unicraft library that actually implements the syscall. And in this way, you can actually run uh, a binary that has uh, been totally unmodified. And this means that you don't need to port applications in order to run them on Unicraft. The second approach to achieving this is what we call from source or with muscle, which is work in progress. In this case, we take the sources of an application and we build it with its native build system against muscle. And then we take the resulting object files and add them to the Unicraft build. This works because Unicraft has a ported version of Muscle, which then redirects, again, any syscalls to the shim layer. And then that goes on to executing them by the different Unicraft libraries actually implementing them. And the advantage here being that um, the syscalls actually turn into just simple function calls, so the performance is better. In terms of platform support, Unicraft started uh, several years ago as a simple x86 on Zen uh, project with a dummy libc called no libc. Uh, so also several years ago, we started adding support for KVM and new lib. And then more recently, uh, there's been a lot of effort towards supporting ARM64, which is there now. And as I mentioned, work in progress is muscle, which should be coming in the next month or so. And then from the open source community, there's people working on supporting Hyper-V and VMware, and more recently, the RISC-V architecture. So here are just a few screenshots uh, of Unicraft running on Hyper-V and VMware. 
on risk 5 and finally, you can also run Unicraft bare metal on ARM64. In this case, uh, this is a screenshot of it running on their Raspberry Pi 3. Okay, the third barrier to deployment was uh, framework integration. Uh, many Unikernel projects, when they came out, there were not, no obvious standard frameworks such as Kubernetes today. And even many of them didn't have any toolkits. So building these unikernels was a matter of getting uh, dirty with make files and so forth. So uh, it was really uh, a difficult, uh, a lot of engineering effort to get started with these. So in Unicraft, we're trying to make this as painless as possible. And we've done this in several steps. First with uh, Virtual Studio Code, uh, we provide an official plugin so here's just a brief video where you can actually get the plugin and then you can open a Unicraft uh, project. Uh, in this case, uh, we can select a Hello World one. And then uh, you can see there's a special U Unicraft symbol on the bar on the left. And then uh, you can just do standard development and then it'll build and actually run it for you all within VS Code. And underneath, what it's actually doing is running Craft. And Craft is our toolkit that wraps around how to, to easily build and run Unicraft Unikernels. Uh, of course, you could do this by hand using make files, uh, but you don't need to. Craft simplifies this a lot to the point where you can run a single command to build and run your Unikernel. You just need to choose your architecture and your target application. So Craft takes care of any dependencies, what libraries need to be uh, dragged in. For each application, there's a Craft YAML file stating dependencies and so forth. These are created by the team, they already exist. And then uh, just a short video of how to use it. If, all you, if the simplest use case is, I just wanna choose an application, in this case, Nginx, I just want to craft to build it, download the sources, build it, and then run it on, on KVM. So this is what the craft up command does. It'll uh, first fetch the sources for Unicraft and for Nginx. And then once it's done downloading them, you can see downloading now, it'll start actually doing the build. And then I'll just go ahead and skip to the end of the build. Uh, I think, yeah, 98% now. And once it's done, what it's going to do is it's going to execute it uh, right away on KVM, which is the selected platform we chose. There it is. It's already booted. It's running Nginx. And just to make sure it's working, we're going to curl the IP uh, listed in the output. Uh, to see if we're able to retrieve a Hello World page, and there it is. The third part is obviously once you've built your Unikernel, you want to deploy it. Arguably, the de facto standard for doing this is Kubernetes. So we've done an integration with Kubernetes where we created an equivalent for run C called run U, which instead of running containers, runs Unicraft Unikernels. And with that in place, you can use unmodified kubectl in the Kubernetes dashboard. Uh, as you normally would, it's just underneath you're running Unicraft Unikernels. And here's a short video showing that the only modification you need to do is to the manifest YAML where uh, you would specify that you'll be using this uh, run you. And then with that in place, uh, you can just use standard kubectl commands. In this case, we're going to uh, create a Unicraft uh, pod. It's already done. So uh, pretty quick, and then you can sh you can list it, of course. And then uh, we'll just show the log to, you can see now that it's running just as before, it's running Nginx, we can still get the IP address and curl it. This is just to show that it's, it is actually up and running and working. And then you can go to the standard dashboard. Again, this is wholly unmodified and you can go to the Unicraft pod and get some basic, basic stats for it. And you can see the console there too. 
Okay, and the final piece is obviously once uh, your unikernel is deployed, you want to see how it's doing, be, be able to monitor it and so forth. So here we added yet one more library to Unicraft uh, that works as a Prometheus uh, exporter. And then uh, what we do is we create Grafana dashboards out of it. This is an actual Grafana dashboard of a Unicraft uh, kernel showing networking statistics and memory statistics. The final uh, barrier to deployment is to do with debugging. Uh, many projects had no standard tools, no GDP support, so it was really tricky uh, to actually debug them. Uh, there was no performance profiling tools and there was poor no documentation. In Unicraft, we've been working hard to provide such features. Uh, there's a library called UK Debug that uh, you can enable and when enabled, it gives you access to assertions, trace points, and a full GDB server. Uh, there's a library called UK Test for unit testing. And UK Store allows all the other libraries to store information about uh, their, their performance. So the if you have a memory allocator, you can store and get uh, memory consumption stats there, and then you can export them onto Grafana. In addition to that, we created a tool called Uniprof. What this does is it takes uh, stack snapshots periodically, and then you can use those to generate flame graphs, such as the one I'm showing on here. And the flame graph will very quickly and visually show you where your performance bottleneck is. Uh, it'll give you even the, the function names, and then you can go ahead and try to optimize those. And finally, we have done a, a lot of effort uh, to document Unicraft uh, well. This is available on unicraft.org slash docs. And then uh, a word on security. If you know anything about unikernels, you, or even if you don't, you probably have figured out by now that because they're specialized, they have a lot of potential for having good security features because for one thing, they have a small trust and compute base. Um, but if you know about unikernels, you've probably seen some reports in the past that have analyzed their security and they've been uh, lacking to some extent. And this is nothing fundamental. It's just that many uni uh, unikernel projects haven't really focused on adding standard security features. In Unicraft, we're trying to change that. So there's lots of security features that are in place uh, or that are under review or that are planned. I'm not going to go over all of them. But um, the, the target is by, by the fall of this year that all of these features will be already in and upstream. We did do a test of that EC2 image running Nginx on Unicraft that I mentioned earlier. We pointed one of the security analyzers, web-based ones, to it, and that got pretty good security ratings. So Unicraft is a Linux foundation project. Um, the main website is unicraft.org, so if uh, you are at all interested, please check it out. We have a very active Discord server. I think we have a very friendly community, so if you have any questions, if you have doubts about what, whether Unicraft might apply to your project or you don't know how to get started, please drop by. Uh, we're usually fairly responsive. Another way to get started is we have a lot of regular hackathons. These are, these are based in cities, but you can always remotely participate. So this is another good way to get started and get some hands-on supervision from some of the maintainers of Unicraft. And then finally, if you want to read all the gritty nitty details of uh, Unicraft, there's a long white paper that we published last year at Eurosys. Uh, they got the best paper award, so uh, you can read all the details about Unicraft there. And finally, if you want to get in touch with us, uh, here are our contact uh, information. And if you like the project at all, please star us on GitHub. That really, really helps. And with that, I thank you for your time.